How is everybody doing? And welcome back for another Strength Chat episode. Today, I have got a very special guest for you. Today, I'm joined by a weightlifter who got a world clean and jerk bronze medalist, Commonwealth champion, and the first British European champion in 26 years. Today, I'm joined by the one and only Emily Musket. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot for, uh, for taking the time to jump on. Um, how are you? How are you getting on with things? What's been happening in your world? Yeah, pretty good. Um, obviously had the competition and that went better than I expected, to be honest, um, considering the, the preparation I had for that comp. Um, and then after like having to do the quarantining stuff when I got back and um, basically just been trying to get back into my training and um, yeah, just back on on the volume side of things. So lots of reps, just trying to get some fitness back and build some strength and gain a bit of muscle really. So yeah. Yeah. And how are you finding that after um, after coming back from from Russia? How are you How are you feeling sort of after um, after the competition? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I was elated with the results, so I was on a bit of a high. Um, but then you do kind of come crashing down because you're it's back to the work and back to the grind. So it has it did take like a good week or so to actually just get back into a routine and get back in the gym. Um, my body is a bit stiff and stuff, so. We're just trying to ease back into things um yeah it's it's very hard when you've tapered for an event and then you know you compete and then you have like a little bit like a few days off it is quite hard to then get back into things but I think once you've built like a bit of momentum like a couple of weeks later you're back to you know you're back to where you were at before so yeah I'm kind of in that phase just just getting back there yeah yeah, it's interesting as well because you know it's. Um, uh, I've got a competition in a in a couple of weeks for for powerlifting, um, so you know put that on the bigger scale of you know competing at the European Championships and then and then having a little bit a little bit of time afterwards. Um, it's good to know that you know if anyone listening who is entering a competition or I've got some more competitions coming up that yeah it's probably a little bit more normal to be feeling a little bit like that after after a competition um but obviously taking into account the the traveling and, and and that sort of stuff as well um did you did you see a little bit of Russia while, while you're out there or was it competition and then <laughs> yeah to be honest it was like I got back from the competition venue so I competed and then I got pulled for a um, drugs test so blood and urine and that takes a while so I didn't get back to the hotel until like 8 8 30 p.m uh -huh. and then obviously had to go and get food and um the whole team wanted to go out like because it was the last night and then we had to get up at like 2 a.m for the i say get up we didn't actually go to bed but <laughs> <laughs> the airport like that night so yeah it was um and then the there was lots of dramas trying to travel during the pandemic like we got to we had to do lots of covid tests as you can imagine and then we got to moscow airport and then the lady at check-in said oh no you need an experience Press test done now and so we we're like right okay and um, it's not what we needed at four o'clock in the morning and yeah we had to go and get a covid <laughs> test and we had to try and wait for our results but also knowing that we had a flight in two hours it was like we basically ended up running for the plane and it was yeah it was uh not not the easiest uh journey but <laughs> what to expect when all the companies are like locked down and stuff yeah definitely i think it has been um especially you know you know especially first competition um being in another country that to, to manage that on top of you know everything else as well um but yeah um glad you caught your uh, glad you caught your flight it wasn't a case of yeah i'm actually still in russia i'm still i'm, I'm still here i've not been i've not been i've not been home yet um glad <laughs> Uh, so before I sort of dive into um, you know some of the questions and topics I had in mind, for anyone listening who might not know your background um, in weightlifting and competing, just want to give a little bit of a background to yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, I started weightlifting properly um, properly in 2008. I was a pole vaulter and then I had to do weightlifting as part of my S&C training. And I had a weights coach called Keith Morgan at Crystal Palace and he he said to me, look, you'd be quite good at this. Why don't you change sports? Wasn't too sure at first, but um, eventually just thought, well, actually, I'm better at this than I am pole vault. So I changed sports and haven't really looked back since. So it's been a good 13 years. Um, and I definitely would say, like, if, you, if there was, like, a graph of my progress, it would definitely start down here 
and be very up and down but the general trend is like moving upwards so um yeah definitely been a bit of a slow burner but i think that's just weightlifting in general um and yeah just the last couple of years things have seemed to come together a little bit more and you know i finally feel like i'm a bit of a like bit bit of a more consistent performer on the platform and um yeah i've, I've i'm definitely pleased with how my career has turned out put it like that yeah oh cool yeah it's, it, it, I, like, I like to ask that question as well and you know because coming from you know speaking to powerlifting and and and, and weightlifters have come from different backgrounds to then compete in more of the um uh, like barbell barbell sports if you like um and do you think that you know coming from a competitive background in pole vaulting that kind of helped your weightlifting or was it a case of like what you say actually i did it in training quite enjoyed it was pretty good at it i, I thought i'd give i thought i'd give it a go yeah i think there's definitely some benefit to coming from another sport or having done something else previously i think um because your body just gets a little bit conditioned, doesn't it? Like it knows um, what hard work is and you just put it through its paces a bit and your muscles just start to develop. So when I was pole vaulting, I already, you know, was quite strong with the training that I was already doing. So um, it just transferred quite nicely over. Um, and lots of the weightlifters I know have come from other sports. So it's quite a common thing really to just, you know, make that, that swap over. Um, yeah. There's definitely a benefit to doing any sport when you're younger, isn't there, to be honest? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I think sometimes as well, um, I know for me, being from a rugby background and then with work and, and that sort of stuff, just couldn't commit to training as much. And then I always remember a, a, a guy I worked with basically gave me a 12-week powerlifting, uh, uh, powerlifting programme, right, you're going to compete in, um, uh, in 12 weeks. And I was like, oh, well, that's good because I can train before after my shift and it's a it's a little bit yeah. better still competitive and still something to focus on but you know not um uh, just a little bit different going from a team environment to a um you know a, a, an individual but um with the because obviously you said there about using uh, weightlifting for for s and c um and then starting off and you know the last couple of years obviously you know progress has been has been really really good what were sort of some of the biggest things like the learning process of that because there's always that thought process from like a coach's point of view that using it for S and C, you just need to get the athletes stronger and more powerful rather than making them weightlifters. So what yeah. was the thought process to then using it just to get better or stronger and more powerful for pole vaulting to then learning more of the technical aspects and, you know, developing, developing that area. Yeah. So I did, when I first started, I was doing a lot of the power movements. So power snatch, power cleans I was doing some squats as well just to build that strength through my legs but um yeah I wasn't really essential for me to do the like full lifts um squat all the way down because they are a little bit slower so um yeah but when I did actually eventually make the change over to weightlifting that was something that I had to undo a little bit because I was so used to like being super quick and catching the bar really high that we did have to kind of take it back a few steps and then learn how to do a full snatch like squatting all the way down just get that timing right so um yeah I think because my weights coach at that time had a lot of other athletes in there and you know they were always doing power movements and pulls and things like this so um yeah it was definitely like a once once you make that switch you have to really go into depth with the technical aspects and um get every little section of the lift right before you put it together yeah and how was because i know from you know i think from going into like first competitions and uh, developing you know from like a regional competition or like a, a gym competition to then national to then international competitions how have you found sort of um you know the actually competing and competing on different stages and you know developing through to then you know competing at nationals but then you know, going to different countries and, and putting that into, um, uh, adding that into the equation as well. Yeah, I think the first few major competitions I did that were abroad were a little bit overwhelming for me. Like I was quite new to the sport, um, didn't have much experience. And, you know, on the day, I just, you just get so nervous and you're like, I'm not sure if I can do this kind of thing. 
Um, but then the more of those that you go to, like you just stack up this experience because each one's different. Um, and then you just kind of get to realize what works for you on the day. So um, now I'm like 13 years into the sport. I've realized that actually competing is the best thing for me. And, you know, the adrenaline that I get from those nerves are actually beneficial to me and my performance rather than like a hindrance. So, but that's only something that you can learn as like the more you do competitions and the more experience you gain over the years. So um, now I'm just completely hundred percent reliant on being a little bit nervous at comps yeah. because I know it will help me. So it's a bit of a funny one. Yeah. Cause I'm not a big training lifter. Like I don't do PB weights in the gym. I literally have to wait until I'm on the platform on the day to actually fire up a little bit and, you know, just stick a little bit more, more weight on the bar. Yeah. I think that's when you're speaking to a couple of, um, you know, other, other lifters and, you know, a couple of, a couple of clients yourself, sometimes it is, you know, sometimes you don't always want to be hitting um, your, your best numbers in, in training, you know, it's all there. You want to leave that, leave that on the platform just on that. Cause obviously a question that I always like to ask, especially, you know, the, you know, 13 years doing, uh, doing weightlifting. Do you, do you sometimes think back at some of your early competitions and think, I can't believe I did that before the competition or have you kept like a similar, similar routine all the way through or is the things that you've changed over time or something, sometimes you think, oh, I have no idea why, I don't know why I've done that. <laughs> um, I just feel like um, recent years, I'm just a lot more focused. Um, whereas I think the early, early years, the first few internationals, I was a bit more like I'd allow myself to get a bit distracted and, I'd allow my thoughts to kind of run away with themselves a little bit and just have like more doubts about things. Um, like I, my first international was actually the Commonwealth Games in India and I ended up missing all three of my snatches and bombed out the competition. So um, that was like, like a massive eye opener for me because it was disastrous at the time. I was like, what the hell am I doing? You know, missing yeah. lifts and... And it, but it was also just a massive learning curve because I just went away from that thinking, well, I'm not I'm determined never to do that again. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't change it for anything now. But at the time, it just felt like the end of the world. Um, yeah. But all of the all of those little experiences and failures and, you know, competitions that went badly have all kind of led to this point where I can draw on those experiences and use, use it to just... Um, you know, compete like I know how and uh, produce the results when I need to. Yeah. And how much is that sort of, because I know sometimes, especially, you know, um, watching it on, uh, watching the champion, the European Championships on Eurosport, you know, having your headphones in and having having the coach there and, and, and all those sort of things. How much over time has just been you sort of focusing on yourself and how much, you know, before and, well, before, after and during, do you speak with your, um, coach around around the competition or is it just you know having that own thought process in your head of right okay I, I maybe should have done this better or just learning from those experiences because especially you know some of the um, uh, either people new to the sport or uh, or beginners can sometimes be a little bit and um, can get inside their own head a little bit and you know look at what other people are doing rather than putting it down as you know a learning experience yeah I think um I think you have to kind of go through that to realize what works for you. So, you know, I've definitely been there where I've been so focused on like a main rival and what they're doing and watching them in the warm up, like warm up room and stuff. Like you just learn not to do those things later on. So I definitely have got like certain things that I do or don't do. I don't watch anyone else. Um, I also don't talk to the coaches about numbers or things like that. I say, like, I literally, they know. I say to them, you you lot decide the numbers, you do all that tactical stuff and things like that. I just want to do the lifting and I know that's what works for me. Like if I start getting involved with all those thought processes and it will just throw me off. Um, yeah. So I've got, you know, I have got certain things that I need to do during a comp, before a comp, and the coaches are aware of that because luckily we've worked together for, you know, over a number of years now. So, um 
it just works like there's a good little team there and they're they're experienced and you know I'm experienced enough now to um to just know what what to do and what not to do kind of thing so yeah kind of lead me to it <laughs> yeah yeah I think that's because I know because you, you said there about you know looking at i um, looking at other um uh, trying to beat the other person or, or or look at the other competition yeah or, and I know I said about beginners and, and going to first competitions but uh, there's always that transition period where people go from like the regional competitions to maybe qualifying for nationals. And then when they start pushing up a little bit more, how did you feel about that transition? And because I know I've done it, you go to a competition and you think, all oh, right, well, if I pull this, I can, I can get this place in. But then actually sometimes like the whole reason I've kept doing powerlifting in, and I, you know, I'm sure it's the same for, um, you know, weightlifting as well or any sport that you do, you keep doing it because you, because you enjoy doing it. Did you ever yeah. feel there was like a transition period between, right, actually, I'm just going to, like what you say, just focus on the lifting side of things rather than let the coaches coach and I'm just going to focus focus on the barbell. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, I think, um, I think when you like first start going to like national or international competitions, you're kind of excited to be there because you've not ever done one of those competitions before. Um, but I think after you've done a few of those, it's more about, you know, your goals change. It's not about taking part anymore. It's about actually trying to get a medal, trying to, you know, push and get a PB and trying to make the international team or something like that. So I think there was definitely a number of years, probably from like 2013 to 2017, where I was like enjoying the experiences, wasn't really getting massive results on the platform. But I think... For me, the turning point was going into 2018 in the Commonwealth Games uh, and just knowing that I was in really, really good shape and knowing that I could, did have an opportunity to get a medal. And that's things like stepped up for me there. So um, I just got a lot more focused and, um, yeah, just made sure I was trying to cover all the little 1% of my training that could perhaps, you know, boost my performance a little bit more. So... I just became a better athlete all round, I think. And I think that's where the transition lies. You just think, well, I'm not here to make up the numbers. I'm now here to actually achieve. Yeah. And was that, especially when you're looking at those, like those one percent, was that just maybe a, a change in training style or, because I know obviously, you know, a big thing is nutrition and sleep and, and, and recovery. Are those, where was sort of like the biggest area that you found or actually, you know, put in, putting more um, sort of focus on that or adding that in and, you know, help, help progression a little bit more? I think for me, it all started when I had um, a hip injury. And so I was forced to kind of reset. So I couldn't lift. Um, I'd also just moved from the UK to Australia. So like it was a big change in general. Yeah. And so I had no choice but to start trying to build my own little team around me. Like I'd gone from somewhere where I knew where the physio was and my coach was to being somewhere where I didn't know anything about anyone and I had to sort it all out myself. So I had this hip injury. I contacted a SNC coach that I'd worked with at um, British weightlifting called Sean Joff. And I asked him to help me rehab my hip injury and just give me lots of SNC stuff. Um, so I literally spent about six months just doing like rehabby type stuff and gradually moving back onto a barbell so it was like tons of single leg work and glute work and um hip like stability around my hips and core work and things like that and um just going back to those basics I think really just helped me build everything else around it so I was like right well what's going to help me other than doing the actual training I need to make sure I've got a physio that's going to help me I'm going to have to get a regular massage. I'm going to have to sort my diet out because I had to move up weight class. So I was like, I need to get calories in to build the muscle. Um, I need to um, perhaps see a psychologist. Um, I need to go for like regular swims, things like that. Just little, little things that I knew would help my performance. Um, I just made sure I got on top of leading into the Commonwealth. Yeah. I think, I, I think that's interesting because we, we said, or I said before there, you know, weightlifting, uh, powerlifting, you know, you see that one person going out onto the platform, but you said they're like building the team 
building a team around you, um, which, you know, I think sometimes people forget to see that train footage or they see, see you on the platform there. Um, you know, but there are other people that, that help you, you know, get, get to that point. Um, and as well, you know, the, the thing that you said, you know, going, going back to basics, I think sometimes, um, especially, you know, beginners are looking at, you know, elite level athletes such as yourself being like, what's their magic formula? What, what, what are they doing? Whereas actually, you know, sometimes it's the basics and making sure that all those bases are covered to be yeah. like, all oh, right, okay, I just need to do that day in, day out, make sure, make sure that's covered. And then, you know, you, you said at the start of, you know, it'll end up paying dividends The you know, the longer, the more you put into the, more you put into the sport, if you like. Um, yeah. Just going on, I know you mentioned about your, your hip injury there um, and, you know, uh, moving back to the UK and, and, and trying to cover all those bases. Once those sort of started and then, you know, COVID hit and obviously with everything that's happened over the, over the last, last year or so, um, how did you feel and manage, you know, with, with everything from, you know, doing well at the, at the Commonwealth and other competitions and then basically everything kind, kind of stopping? How, have you, how did you find the last year with, with preparation and managing training, managing injury and, and, and all yeah. those sort of things? Yeah, so um, the Olympic qualification period started at the end of 2018 and I didn't actually start back training until like January 2019 um, and it was a long qualification period and all my performances were getting better and better and then we got to like the start of 2020 and uh, I knew I had like a couple more competitions to do and then that would be at that, that and then um, I was in the best shape of my life so yeah I was generally looking forward to it and uh, I started to get this knee issue um, and I just thought it was just, you know, weightlifting, powerlifting, all these strength sports, you get pains and aches and all sorts. Like you just carry on anyway, because that's what you do. Because if you stopped for every little pain, then you would never train, would you? So um, I just ignored it, but it just got progressively worse and worse. And so I was like, well, I just need to hold on for this competition and then I can get it sorted. But then obviously the competition started getting postponed um, and things like that and everything got delayed. And just no one knew what the hell was going on. So it was all very uncertain. Um, and then at the same time, my mum got diagnosed with motor neurone disease. So it was all happening all at once. And uh, I had to start arranging my move back from Australia to the UK. Um, so that was quite stressful um, during COVID. And um, yeah, I had to move back three months before my husband. And it was just like a really crazy year. And I couldn't even do my proper training because my knee was so bad. So, yeah, I was just trying to keep moving as much as I could. But um, I was definitely not in a great place. And I think I don't think anyone was around the world, to be honest. Like everyone was struggling some, for some reason or another. But um, I definitely would say like 2020 was one of the worst years I've ever experienced. Um, but I started to see I saw a sports doctor about my knee and they said, well, it's this thing called a plica syndrome. So I had to get cortisone injections, but I couldn't get surgery because I didn't have time to recover before the competitions and things like that. So it was all up in the air, but we were told that the Europeans would go ahead in April this year. So I just, at about um, Christmas time, I just tried to really start stepping up my training and then, um, you know, decided to prepare for the event as if it was going to happen because we still weren't yeah. sure. Um, and just mentally, I just found my preparation was so challenging. I mean, I, don't, I know I had a lot going on in my personal life, like my mum passed away at Christmas time, but it just, the one thing I wanted to remain constant was my training, but it just seemed to be really affected. And I just um, ended up every single session, I'd like doubt myself when I was trying to lift the bar. Um, so I wasn't committing to my lifts. So I was effectively just like, bottling attempts at like weights that would normally be quite light for me yeah. um and I found it I just found it really hard because I'd go back and compare myself to when I was in my best shape and I was like well I was doing that you know I was doing 92 kilos for three doubles every day on a snatch now I'm, I can't even do 85 and you know you can't help but go back and do that and uh over analyze but um I think I just had to remain um 
you know, I had to trust the work that I was doing to get me back to where I needed to be. And I, I did see like a sports psychiatrist to help me kind of go through those thought processes and manage it as best as I could. Um, definitely helped. I think I just tried everything and anything to get me back to like a more confident um, mindset. And um, I think on the day I just, just it could have gone either way. And I just tried to really utilize that adrenaline and that buzz on, to being back in, on a comp platform um, and tried to use it to my advantage. And luckily it paid off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like I say, you know, watching it was, uh, was, was awesome. Um, and with the, you, uh, earlier on, you mentioned obviously about, you know, saving um, or uh, performing on, on the platform and training, not like a PB lifter, PB lifter in training. Yeah. Obviously that mindset of comparing to where you've been before, was there half of your mindset thinking, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to be competing soon anyway, you know, and I'm not wanting to do in PBs and the other half being, and the other half kind of comparing or what, what was sort of, does that kind of make sense what I, what, what I said? Yeah, so I, was yeah. That's, I think that's what was getting into my head a lot in training. I was like, how am I going to lift X, Y, Z on the platform if I can't even do this in the gym? Knowing that when I've lifted my best before, I was lifting a lot more in the gym. So I was like, um, you know, I'm not doing that. So that means how the hell am I going to open on that and lift that? So... Um, but then at the same time, knowing, like you said, knowing that I can produce the results on the day, I think a little part of me was still like, you know, dependent upon that and knowing that I can step it up a little bit when it comes to the performance time. So, yeah, like I said, I think if I hadn't, if I didn't have that tiny bit of confidence in my abilities on the day, I probably wouldn't have even gone to Moscow because my training was that bad so um it's yeah and that's and I truly think that's something that experience has taught me rather than you know I would not have been able to do that when I was 22 and you know three years into my lifting career yeah yeah definitely because I think sometimes and um, you know I've I've had it my I've had it myself and I'm sure other people have had um, you know, at times when they when when they think like when when they think like that, you know, oh why why isn't training going well? But you know, we've we've said it, or you've mentioned a couple of times, just putting it down to a, a learning experience and the end result after the year that, that that that's gone on to then you know put that performance on on the on on the European stage, um, you know, makes it think oh well actually like you know it's 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 kind of it, it's kind of paid off, um. Because that's uh, when everything could. Because when you mentioned about letting the coaches coach and um, you were just performing, performing on the day, how did you know actually turning up to the competition and nerves and performing on the day? Did everything just feel good with everything that had gone on before? Did you just think just had that had that focus, if you like? Yeah, um, I definitely felt more nervous than usual. Um, I think because I'd had so many doubts, I was just like extra um worried I suppose about how it could possibly go but um at the same time I was like good I'm glad I've got these nerves because I need them um I, I was definitely focused um but I was also I was also conscious of my knee because my knee is still bothering me it's still an issue so and I feel those the most on clean and jerks and it has affected my techniques a little bit so I was just like adamant that I've just got to try and think about the lifting and not really worry about anything else around me I can only control what I can control and just go with the flow a little bit so um yeah I managed to just get into the mindset that I I can get into only on comp day and it um it just worked out all right to be honest yeah I think two things that you said there um because I've said this to lifters as well, control what you control and go with the flow. Is that easier said than done? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> like I said, I wouldn't have been able to do that when I was just starting out. It's just something that you you learn over time and it's all the experience you add up. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Because sometimes when I, when I do say it, I kind of think, yeah, you know, 
it, it, it does take time to ease into that a little bit more because you know you worry about everything being like oh, I've not got the right straps for you know warm ups or or anything like that which can you know play in your mind a little bit. Um, with the because obviously you mentioned seeing a, a sports psychologist and everything around you know I think mindset plays um, not just in in weightlifting but but sport in sport in general. Yeah. Um, how was that? What was it like working with a with with a um, a sports psychologist? And what was sort of the um, the thought press is going through? Because I know you know depending on what uh, level of lift you're at, you know sometimes a certain weight can get in somebody's head, or how training's going, or you know all these other things, external factors that are that are happening out, outside of the gym and out of training. Um, was that something that was you know really beneficial? And is that something that you would keep you know keep up with? Yeah, I think it was. It definitely made a difference. Um, I think because I was massively overthinking everything, that's what back like to, made me backfire in terms of my lifting. So he just kind of gave me lots of processes that would help me focus my thoughts um, a bit more efficiently and just accept certain thoughts and doubts are going to come in, but that you can, you know, you can control them. So. Um, yeah, for me, it was more like I'd have to think of something that might anchor me in a little bit. And um, it was more like the emo- stopping the emotional response. So, you know, when I do one of my silly high pulls because I'd bottled out the lift, rather than just getting super frustrated and tight and tense, I would just like start to think about certain things that would just level me out a little bit and stop that emotional response from taking over. So um, just like methods to just help you reset reset your brain and just not get too caught up in those negative and spiraling thoughts so um yeah there was definitely snippets of like our sessions together that I I would take with me to the gym um I think I knew I'd be I knew I had a certain mindset on comp day so I knew if I could just allow myself to get to that place then I'd be all right but it was definitely the the thought processes in training and trying to manage them that made the difference for me and um I'd re- I would recommend a sports psychologist to anyone that might have you know some of those doubts or um you know have struggle a little bit in training with the mental side of things so yeah I would would definitely see a psychologist if you get a chance yeah because I know it, it's kind of one of those things where everyone talks about and we said there about the the, the training program sleep, recovery, nutrition, all those sort of things. Whereas, you know, a lot of it is a, a mindset, a mindset type of thing. And, you know, having that, having that intent and, and thought pro- and thought processes. Was that the first time you'd worked with a, a sports psychologist? And did you actually have any doubts about going to a, a, a sport, a sports psychologist? Yeah. So I've, I've, we used to have a sports psychologist um, when we were funded for like a couple of years back in 2015. And, um, yeah, I thought that was, I thought it was helpful then, but at the same time, I wasn't really, didn't feel like I was mentally struggling. So perhaps it wasn't needed as much, but um, I've seen a psychologist generally like for general life stuff. So I knew there was a benefit to it. And then obviously because of my um, struggles, this last like six months, six to 12 months was like solely in my, um, in a training capacity with my lifts I thought well I'll go I'll have to go and see someone more specific to sports and um yeah I was a bit you, you are a bit dubious when you go and see these people because you're like I'm not sure what they're going to say to me and I'm not sure if they understand you know how I feel and whether or not you know it's just a load of nonsense like you yeah. do you can't help but be a bit skeptical but once you actually start trying to give things a go um, and you try and actually, you know, practice some of the processes that they give you, you can start to see a benefit, um, but you have to be willing to give those a go. So, um, you know, I think if anyone feels like, oh, I'd quite like some help with that, but I don't really want to see anyone, but I reckon give it a couple of sessions and, you know, review it after that, because sometimes it's like a subconscious thing that it, it is helping without you actually realizing. Yeah, I know. Because uh, why I asked on that, uh, um, a girl I went to uni with actually um, is a is a sport is a sports psychologist, 
and then um, you know she's slowly started to build up working with um you know a lot of teams and a, and, and and a lot of athletes and it is one of those things where you know there's Physi physiology and strength and conditioning and they're like the big rocks and it's kind of like um that's the answer this is th this is what happens whereas with the psychology side of things you know a lot of people are going to be are going to be different and you know everyone's got different experiences and how they're going to how they're going to work with things do you think from you know from um uh, competitions that you've gone through and you know the various listers that, that you might have seen or, or experienced or other, other competitions you've been to do you think sometimes, like what you said there about, you know, subconsciously there might be something um, underlying that needs addressing? Do you think sometimes um, uh, people might go to a, uh, other people would benefit from going to a sports psychologist, but you know, don't go until you know something's going wrong with training or or, or, so, or something like that? Like from your experience and, and seeing other other lifters. Yeah, I think it would be quite interesting to see if. Um seeing a sports psychologist from like the start of your career all the way through how that would impact you and your your performances um i'm certainly guilty of going to see these people when when there's an issue um but it, anything can be figured out i think if you're willing to just put a little bit of work in yourself like it's not you don't see a sports psychologist and they may wear wave a magic wand and everything's fine like you are still going to struggle. You are still going to experience some of those negative things that you have been experiencing. But generally, if you practice some of the stuff they tell you to do, you will start to see improvement. So I think um, I definitely think there's a lot to be said for having psychologists involved in sport a little bit more frequently and from a, you know, from a younger age. Um, so certainly any of my athletes I coach I'd encourage them to see a sports psychologist because I think it can only be of benefit to be honest yeah I know that was it might have been a little bit of tangent but I was as I was thinking when you were uh, when, when you were chatting there I think it is especially when you said you know waiting until the point where you need um, uh, you know it would be a benefit going to see a, a sports psychologist it's a little bit like injury prevention you only you know you only say, oh, well, this was injury prevention up until the point where you actually get an injury. So is it actually injury prevention or, you know, if you never have an injury, is it injury prevention or just or just good training? Yeah. Um, and I think the same mindset could be, you know, around um, sports psychology because I know, um, you know, from the, the girl I went to uni with and doing it as a as a module at uni it is interesting and, you know, the the, the, the power the power of it is, is good. It's a little bit like, again, on a uh, I, I do like a tangent every now and again. The the legacy, um, the the book called Legacy about the uh, New Zealand rugby team, and um, that's a lot around uh, mindset and that sort of stuff, which is um, which is interesting. And you know, if you sort of unlock that power, if you like, you know, you can uh, you can you can see the results from it. Um, 100%. We took, yeah, we've we, we've touched on obviously a couple of things as well, but obviously the biggest thing was the uh, one, one of the one of the biggest things was the team that you obviously took um, to the European Championships. How much of an impact did? Because I know again we, we've said before it's an individual sport, but having those team of other listers around you, how sort of beneficial and how much of an impact did that have on the result on the day and just getting through training and, 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 you know, and, and progressing. Yeah. Well, we have got a pretty good relationship. Um, like the four of us that went to European. So we've all been weightlifting for quite a while now, like over 10 years for most of us. I think Emily Campbell is the only one that's been lifting about five, but um, it was just nice to kind of go on a trip together. We were all just excited to get back on the competition platform after so long off and, uh, um, we definitely just boosted each other as much as we could, to be honest. I think Zoe was a little bit um, disappointed with her performance at the start. And then um, I knew Sarah was in really great shape and I knew she was feeling confident. So I said to her, like, please inspire me. And she was like, don't worry, I will. And then she went and smashed smashed the comp and got her silver medal. So um, it definitely gave me like a bit of a, a boost and just made me feel a little bit more excited for my own comp definitely set the tone and then um emily campbell finished finished off the uh trip with some gold medals as well so <laughs> yeah all around like we're all super motivated and um 
we all just want to achieve our goals and I think you can sense that within the team like we're all just there together just trying to push each other and support each other I think that's what's the one of the biggest things I've uh, I've seen because I'm I quite like the phrase you either uh, create a culture or become or it's like become part or start following a culture or become part of a culture I can't, I can't think what the I can't think what the phrase was um but yeah you can see that you you know you're pushing each other along and being in that environment it must be a you know a good thing to keep uh, to keep pushing each other along and having that like you say motivation to be like all oh, right well right they're doing this so I I, I need I need to up and, up and do that a little bit more um, yeah. So, obviously, you know, chatting a little bit out of the start now that Europeans are finished and, and, and training, what's kind of the the focus and what's kind of the plan um, going forward now um, with, with training and, and all those sort of things going forward? Yeah, so I'm hoping that I'll qualify for Tokyo. Um, the qualification process is still ongoing at the minute, so there's still competitions. Um, I think there's one in Colombia next week and then, We've still got to wait until like the end of May when all the comps are finished to see what the final ranking list looks like. So I've just basically got to train as if I'm preparing to go. Um, and then I'll find out hopefully in like a month or so whether or not I'm going. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll make any decisions based on based on that. So yeah, it's a bit of a hard time. Just got to sit and wait. But, you know, yeah, yeah. It's, it is, it's the name of the game. So yeah. I didn't, I didn't actually realise um, the uh, qualification process for the for the Olympics until like a couple of uh, a, a couple of months ago, um, and I couldn't believe how like how many different how many different things that happened. But um, yeah, I, you know, I hope everything you know goes to plan and to see you, to see you lifting in um, Tokyo will be will be awesome. And you know, I know obviously you said at the start in that transition period after a competition, but. Um, are you feeling good? Are you, are you feeling um, tra- training training going well? Yeah, I feel like I'm getting back, um, getting my strength levels back. So that's the most important thing at the start of a block is just to get super strong, build that base, um, and just get some decent, consistent training in. And I feel like I've, I'm, I'm, you know, just slowly getting back into that. Squats are coming up again and. Um, my lifts are doing all right so I feel like I'm in a better place at the start of this block than I was at the start of the last block so um, yeah just got just got to basically keep training but manage my um, body a little bit more and just you know make sure it stays as healthy as possible. Um, Yeah well hopefully you know um, managing that and you know we'll see uh, we'll see you lifting uh, listening in Tokyo in a, uh, in the uh, next uh, next couple of months months. So um, thanks a lot, Emily, for taking the time to jump on. Really, really enjoyed uh, uh, chatting with you. And the, the last question that I always like to finish on. I know we've spoke had a couple of tangents and spoken about a couple of different topics there. But for everyone listening, um, what would be your take on points or words of wisdom to finish off? Um, I would just say to anyone that has taken part in a sport, just to stick with it and persevere um because you've got to, you've got to experience like the lows and the pain to reach your end goal and to become successful basically so just keep going and and don't give up yeah that's a good way a good way to finish on because yeah i think it's always you know if someone comes in i've been training for four weeks why 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 aren't i you know lifting all the way all the way in the gym um, it's a it's a process, and you know it'll it'll take time, and um, you know uh, you know you you you're gonna get out what what you put in, and if you yeah. you know if you keep going, um, it'll do well. So yeah, thanks a lot for taking the time to jump on. Um, if anyone uh, wants to either ask any questions about anything that we've chatted about today, or sort of see your um, you know uh, journey of training and the content you've out there, where can people find you or or reach you? Yeah, just I suppose on Instagram is probably the the um, easiest way um it's emily gbwl so if anyone does want to um ask me any questions and feel free to send me a message awesome um thanks again hopefully you know we'll be uh, we'll be watching you um smash it at the at the, at the olympics so i'm sure myself and uh, everyone listening will be keeping that keeping their fingers crossed thanks again for taking the time to jump on thanks a lot to everyone listening and i will see you all next week <laughs>